What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Devrow YouTube channel. I'm your host, Kevin Coleman, and we're back with another Dynasty edition today. And we're today we're looking at deep dynasty targets in your startup draft. So this is something we do generally speaking, every couple months. We look at guys, if you're in a startup draft, who could you go after right now that's kind of a value, right? And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at four prospects today, one from each position in a, like a super flex. PPR 12 team league, what their ADP is and why you maybe should be targeted to them based on where they're going right now, based on that ADP. So we're going to be diving in. We're going to go over what our last targets were. We're going to look how we did because accountability is what we strive for here on the channel. And then we're going to be diving into the four guys that you should be looking at in your dynasty league. So as the intro is going, hit that like and subscribe button, and I will dive into the deep dynasty targets on the other side of it. All right, let's get into our deep dynasty targets and what we're looking for. Not all rookies today, but we are going to be diving into a couple of them and kind of going over what we saw. Now, I want to show you guys last April. So we did this before the draft or I did it before the draft. I said, okay, what are some guys that you could be targeting right now that could increase in their value? So here are the four players that we had in that video. So P. Pirine, he was going at the time 15th round running back 53. He is now going in the 13th round running back 45. And to be honest, like he's looking like he's pretty good set up for pretty good value. If he misses all these landmines out there in free agency at the running back position to where he's going to, he's going to help some managers out there. So we did hit that one. The second one is Pierre strong. That's not really, that's a, that's a, that's a, I don't know, a wash. Uh, he does look like he could be in for some receiving work. Uh, and they didn't really add anything to that running back room. So, you know, that is that it is a possibility. I think the best one that we did, we talked about Jonathan Mingo. And at the time of the video, he was going in the 18th round wide receiver 77. And I had said, hey, listen, he could get day one or day two capital based on what we've been hearing. That's a good person to draft right now. And right now he's going 11th round wide receiver 51. So when you're looking at that, you just you know gained seven rounds of value based on what we talked about in April. And in Kate Otten, we did get we did hit this one too, kind of 22nd round, two round difference. But again, we did have value and we saw an increase in their dynasty value. That's what we're trying to do with these videos. The biggest thing, and to me, is can we find these deep targets? Because deep targets are tough, right? So like Samaj Piran might be able to have you, you know, produce. Pierre Strong's more of that kind of back end, hey, maybe he can fill on an injury depleted, maybe, you know, something happens to Ramondre or whatever the case may be. Mingo, though, was a huge one. He can hit, now you can move him, now you can trade him, right? So when we're looking at deep dynasty targets, it's not always like guys that are going to produce. It's guys that have a perceived value that increases, and then you can ship them off and maneuver and maybe consolidate these guys and then go tear up into real assets, right? That's what we're going to talk about. Now, let's get into our first one. So this one might be like a I don't know. It depends on what you think of Mac Jones. Uh, you know, if you've watched this channel, if you've watched me or follow me for as long as I've been doing this, Mac has never been a guy that I've been targeting. Um, I have won a league with Mac Jones as my quarterback his rookie year because his rookie year, he wasn't too bad. But when you're looking at this right now, he's going in like the ninth-ish round in a super flex draft at QB 31. He's going behind Desmond Ritter, Stafford, Levis, uh, Garoppolo, Aaron Rodgers, all those guys in that category. And he's kind of going around like Baker Mayfield and, and Ryan Tannehill right now based on his ADP. I think that's a value. You know, when you're looking at what he can do, you remember he was runner up and offensive rookie of the year is his, his rookie year. Uh, he did regress last year. We saw that only average about 214 yards per game, 14 pet touchdown pass, 11 interceptions. But it's hard to really quantify those numbers based on who his offensive coordinator is, right? Matt Patricia, that was a nightmare. Now he's got Bill O'Brien. And what you thought of Bill O'Brien as an offensive coordinator at Alabama wasn't great, but he has shown that he can produce quarterbacks in this system. They've done an okay job with the weapons around him. They're not perfect. Uh, but at QB 31, he's got to extract some value there. And I think based on just the quarterbacks in the league, he's going to find a home. If he if this doesn't work out, you're still looking at a top 25 asset right now that you can get for QB 31 prices. And this is your quarterback three. I think he's not a bad value to go out there and grab, especially on a trade market. I do think he's that. But in a startup right now, ninth round for your QB three for a guy like this, or if you really want to wait and gamble a QB two that might be able to put in QB two numbers when you can extract value to other positions, couldn't is not a bad guess, right? It's not a bad kind of reach there. Now let's go to a running back position, Eric Gray. So this is a kid that I've been pretty high on 
coming into the pre-draft process. You know, at Tennessee he looked really good this last year, 2022, at Oklahoma. Hey, he was third in the class, PFF receiving grade, fifth in the rushing grade. We saw him really kind of show that he's a three down kid, a three down back. I like that. When you're looking at overall, like, hey, he posted the highest missed tackle rate uh, per 100 touches in the class. So he can make guys miss. He comes into an interesting situation, right? So he's going 18th round running back 68. But he could be right there, right? We, we know that Saquon hasn't signed his franchise tag. Will he sign it? Probably, but he might not, right? After that, that depth chart is really, really murky behind Barkley, right? He could really come in. He's had a good offseason so far. The coaches do like him, um, and he could be right there, settle in. The one thing that he does well in his entire career, he had 549 carries, never fumbled, right? So he, he the coach is going to love that mindset. I think when you're looking at it, they have Matt Breida there, but Gray could beat out Breida, right? And we're talking about a guy going 18th round, that is running back two on a depth chart in an offense that I do really like. I think that overall you're going to like that offense with him with not a ton of weapons in that right receiver room. There's a bunch of guys that are same while they're there. And if Barkley gets injured, which you know we've seen happen before, or if they use Gray in that kind of red zone type area and they kind of lean on him and whatever happens with the contract, Gray could outperform this ADP really early. And this is the type of guy that you look for at the running back position late in drafts that are cube, you know, excuse me, running back two on the depth chart that could increase their value. These are the type of guys that we look at. Then if you're sitting there and you have Barkley or, or if somebody loses Barkley or whatever the case may be, you can move great for more value for the 24 class, depending on how your roster is, or this is the kind of kid you write out. Maybe he's a running back to the end of the year, right? Those are the type of things you look for in these drafts. Now, the wide receiver position, uh, Puka Nakua. I I'm going to go here. I was a Puka guy before probably a lot of people were. I talked about how athletic he was, what he did. He's going to the 19th round, wide receiver 82 right now. Um, you know, when you're looking at what he's been able to do, he's just – there's just something about him. Really good contested catch catcher. Like he can go up and get it. He's got some athleticism. He's not going to be a burner, but I then when you look at these late round guys, wide receiver 82, he finds himself in a fun situation in terms of the depth chart, right? So he's got a fairly early, easy path. He's got Ben Skronik there, Tutu Atwell ahead of him. If Puka can kind of step up and be that guy, you could have that Robert Woods type role. And I know Derek Brown from Fantasy Pros has talked about that a lot. He could be that guy that has those kind of those, you know, those handoffs when we see what Woods used to do, right? Um, and the way they used to use him in this Rams offense, that's a way that Nakua could do it too. He did have show those rushing upside at BYU. I think he had over 300 yards rushing. So we've seen him be able to do that. So the when you're looking at wide receivers, there's so many late round wide receivers. A guy like him is an interesting ad because if he does kind of assume that wide receiver two role, maybe that guy next to Cooper cup or, you know, maybe wide receiver three. I know Van Jefferson is there, but if he can maybe assume that role, if Stafford's healthy, Puka's the guy that can increase in value. And he's not a bad kind of grab right now, late in drafts based on that ADP. When you're looking at that wide receiver 82, I mean, what what other value you're going to get there, right? So when you're going through the list, how many of those other guys are really could challenge to be the wide receiver three slash two on that roster at that at that area, right? That's what I like with Puka and where he's going. Now, next last guy here in tight end position, I wanted to do them all, and I know people are going to be like, not this guy again, but it's Irv Smith Jr., right? We've been waiting for this kid to break out forever. Um, he missed the entire 21 season with a torn meniscus, high, and then. Again, he had the, you know, I mean, in 2022, high ankle sprain. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Um, you know, last year, people thought he could be that breakout. Then they traded for Hawkinson, and it was pretty much over. When you look at where he's at, though, Cincinnati, we like that, right? We like where he kind of signed. He has shown, the Bengals have shown to have kind of like a, they can kind of get you know, tight end two ish is there, right? PPR wise, they had Hayden Hurst, CJ Uzuma. Like those guys actually have shown to have like a general, like they, they had some breakout weeks, right? When Joe Burrow's offense, Irv Smith could be that kid. Only 24. If you're really waiting on that tight end position, a 17th round tight end 27, that might be an area that you just go grab him and you hope for value, right? And, and the difference between tight ends 19 to 28, isn't much like when you're thinking of like where these guys are going and where they're where they're at it isn't much we did a whole tight end episode over at football guys and like if irv can just come in there and let's say he has like touchdown positive you know 
progression there. He scores more touchdowns. He gets like five or six touchdowns there. You're talking about a middling tight end two. Maybe if he can show something low end tight end one, right? That 12 mark, maybe he averages 11 or 12 points per game and you get him at tight end 27 and then maybe someone really believes in him and you can ship him depending on what happens with Higgins. If Higgins moves on, there's all kinds of different scenarios here and it's not bad for a late round tight end. So Irv Smith Jr. is that last guy that we're going to be looking at. So Appreciate you guys tuning in. This is a quick, fun little video of four guys, one guy at each position, deep in dynasty, you know, just startups that maybe you can grab and kind of maneuver and will increase in value like we did the last two months ago. So appreciate you guys. Hit that like and subscribe button. I'll check you guys in the next video.